never finish. <laughs> For since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made. Huh. What's he saying in verse 20 of Romans chapter 1? That God makes himself real to all of creation. Woo! Even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they, the people who don't believe in God, are without excuse. And look, you can do business with this on your own time, but this is Romans chapter 1, right up front, right in the beginning, that if people are denying God, it's not because he hasn't made himself real to them. In the last days, I will pour out my flesh on, I'll pour out my spirit. Please, we don't want flesh poured out on us. <laughs> my brain goes faster than my mouth sometimes, sorry. I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Even the ones who aren't saved yet have had the Spirit poured out on them. Whoa! So maybe when you're talking to them, try to ask the Lord, help me connect with that peace that's in there and make that thing come alive without excuse because although they knew God, they didn't glorify Him as God, nor were they thankful. That's a good verse on Thanksgiving weekend, isn't it? We all know how powerful it is to show gratitude and never forget what you came from. And not to get up on our high horse because now that we've been saved for a while and we stopped drinking and stopped doing drugs, we have some money in the bank. Oh, I think I'll just watch from home this week. I don't need to go to church. I'll just watch from home. Well, I mean, if you're here today, isn't there a difference between being here and watching online? Really? So, again, you would think the pastor's going to say that, of course. Right? But no. It's, it's, it's for your good. It's, for, it's a principle. One puts 1,000 to flight, two put 10,000 to flight, right? So we need each other. Come magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. There are times that you come because you need prayer, but there's times that you come that you're going to be praying for somebody else. Can't do that from home. So here's the message, folks at home. Start creating new habits. You got in the habit of being home because you had to be with COVID. Well, here's, here's the headline. That's over. You can come out now. Come on out. We want you here. <laughs> you all love me so much. Thank you. Although they knew God, they didn't glorify him as God, nor were they thankful, but became futile in their thoughts, and their foolish hearts were darkened. And that goes into a whole long list of things that they did wrong. Professing to be wise, they became fools and changed the glory. Remember, we talked about that in John chapter 1. The word became flesh and we beheld his glory. He tabernacled among us and we beheld his glory. And if you want to lose the glory, sin. That's the fastest way for the glory to leave. Because the holy God lives inside of us. And Take care of your temple. That's what Paul said. Your body is now the temple. Don't defile the temple. And sin defiles. Now, you know, they had different rules in the Old Testament. If it was an intentional sin, there was one penalty. But if it was a mistake that you made, if it was an innocent mistake, it wasn't the same severity. So let's just be careful that we're not too hard on each other. If there is a sin, let's just, let's just cut each other some slack and recognize it's difficult. Because we're always saying on the pastoral care team, if the person doesn't get to the root of the problem, they're going to keep repeating the destructive behavior. So that's one of the greatest ways we can help you is help you see what the root is. Trisha and I would be watching a movie like we were last night. We're like, well, this came because of the trauma. <laughs> we were just saying it last night. Because that's true. There's these entry points of trauma in people's lives that allow the enemy to have a foothold. Exchange the truth of God for the lie and worship and serve the creature rather than the creator. That's idolatry, okay? You worship and, and serve the creature rather than the creator who's blessed forever. So that's one way you, if you want to do an audit, you know, during the course of the week or since we're going to start this on Wednesday nights now and you're going to be journaling maybe on, uh, in the morning prayer time and your devotional time, Right, that, that is when you ask the Lord, Psalm 139. Search, am I getting that right? It's Psalm 139, right? Search my heart, O God. Reveal if there be any wicked way in me. What's wrong with that prayer? Well, you know, we can't ever be like Jesus. Well, we're going to die trying? 
Because that's how you get more like Jesus. You have to die to your flesh. And then I said the universal dilemma. You know, Paul is so good at pointing this out. He says, the, this is the message version. Romans 7, 21 to 23. The moment I decide to do good, sin is there to trip me up. I truly delight in God's commands. Anybody here agree you truly delight? But is the next word. But it's pretty obvious that not all of me joins in that delight. <laughs> Parts of me covertly rebel. There you go. There you go. All your heart, all your soul, all your mind, all your strength. Yes, doing good, but there's this little pocket of pus. <laughs> That's what John Sanford used to call it. It's like you have an infection in part of you. All this other part's working great, but there's this little pocket of poison in your system. Remember that Easter? <laughs> and just when I least expect it, those parts of me that are covertly rebelling try to take charge. This happened in Numbers 11. I'll go through it quickly. The people fell to grumbling. They were out in the wilderness. They were getting sick of the manna, and they started complaining, and, and they used the word grumbling here in the message. And then Eugene Peter says, the misfits, the misfits among them, among the people, had a craving. Anybody know what a craving is like? Can you lift your head if you know what I'm talking about? Because with all the hands up here, they're probably not all the same thing that we're thinking of right now. Uh, but you know what that's like. That, that thing happens in your stomach. Or like Joe Bellotta said when he used to work uh, in a pizza parlor. And was it Bayonne? I think it was Bayonne that they would turn the fan on so the smell of the pizza would go out onto the street. And as people were walking by, they would be drawn right into the door. <laughs> that pizza. See, that's a craving. You didn't even know you had it. You walk by a bakery and you didn't want anything before, but you smell that fresh bread. Mmm. You get drawn in there. But a craving is even deeper than that, right? Like it's it borderline sin unless we're craving the presence of God. But Mario Murillo even made the point that Craving the presence of God is good, but not unless you go out and use what you learned when you were in the presence. So even there, right, you can notch it up a little higher. The misfits among the people had a craving. So instead of focusing on the blessing of the manna, what did they do? They started leaking. That's a good message. Leaking for the leaks. <laughs> well, we were in Egypt, man. We had the leaks. Well, you got the leaks right now because you should shut up and stop complaining. God's God's providing for you miraculously. And you're missing that. You're choosing to focus on the wrong thing. The misfits among the people had a craving. And soon they had the people of Israel whining. This is getting worse, isn't it? Anybody here when um, Lance Wallnow's wife Annabelle was here? She did this great little exercise, remember? She used to say, what's the thing that you complain about the most in your life? And we would all have to think of it. And then she said, do me a favor. Hold your nose and say it really loud in, a, in, a, in an inflated kind of voice. And mine was, this is hard. And she said, this is really hard. And she said, you, 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 you need to let yourself hear yourself saying that so you can remember that it's not like you're, you're blowing this whole thing. I mean, it's worth going back and looking at. It's a great, it was a great night with her. But, you know, nobody wants to be around whining. So it starts by grumbling. It gets led into a craving. And now they're whining. And what are they whining for? Why can't we have meat? We ate fish in Egypt and got it for free to say nothing of the cucumbers and the melons and the leeks and the onions and the garlic. Well, you got it for free because you were a slave. Hello? I don't want to go back to that. Mm-mm. Moses says, God has heard your whining. You're going to eat meat until it's coming out of your nostrils. <laughs> A wind set in motion by God swept the quail in from the sea. And all that day and night and into the next day, the people were out gathering the quail, huge amounts of quail. They spread them out all over the camp for drying. But while they were still chewing the quail, God's anger blazed out against the people. He hit them with a terrible plague, and they ended up calling the place Kibroth Hatava, Graves of the Craving. Help us, Lord. Help us. Help us. Could probably end right there, couldn't we? Because this happens to all of us, right? Like, 
Well, look, let's just be real practical. Most of us here probably dated more than one person and, and had to break up with them, and it wasn't your idea. You weren't the breaker. You were the one that got broken. And your heart is broken, isn't it? All those country songs about a broken heart, like, it actually hurts. And just because they stop dating you doesn't mean you stop loving them. That takes a little while to deal with that kind of pain, doesn't it? Don't medicate it. That doesn't help. That just pushes it off later. So let's just be careful what we're craving. Look at, you know, we do that audit. That's what they say at AA, right? Do a fearless audit of, of your life circumstances and try to find the root causes of things because God has a better way. Look, it's just that simple. He has a better way. Your life could be going good, but God still has a better way.